Yeah! <laughs> One hour later. Fare thee well, duelist. Your enemy controller combo was formidable. Formidable at best. Whitey Dan Duel Links is sponsored by viewers like you. Support the channel directly by becoming a member. What's going on my boys, YT Dan back at it again with another Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video. And today we're gonna be getting in there. This is gonna be another one of these informational videos where I'm gonna be talking about the Karakuri deck or the Kar yeah, the Karakuri deck. Karakuri. This deck is actually uh, pretty busted right now, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. If you don't know, you know, it's the tier one deck right now and looking to be one of the favorites going into the tournament, along with things like Shiranui, Crystrons, and, you know, maybe some invoked action. So if you want to see more meta game breakdowns, more takedowns of the tier one meta decks, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe because I'm going to be doing content like this all the time. All right, my boy. So this is the deck. I like to call it that tier zero tilter. It's not necessarily a tier zero deck. I want to start off by saying that just, hey, baby, you knew what was up. You knew it. as soon as I was going to be recording, you was going to start going goo goo. <laughs> Come here, baby. All right, my boys. So now we're going to be starting to get in there. The baby over here needs a little bit of rocking. So I'm going to rock the baby as I tell you about how busted this deck is. Now, what I think is crazy about this deck, you know, I like to call it the tier zero tilt, but honestly, this deck is not um, a tier zero deck. Um, I would say it's definitely a very strong tier one deck. It has a lot of interesting mechanics and interesting plays in the deck. And I think that it's some uh, very interesting points that I wanna make for the people who don't play this deck, the people who don't have the resources to build this deck, or the piece of people who just kind of see this deck in passing and don't really understand how it works. All they know is it summons three monsters and set three back row. But I mean, yes, that, that is pretty much the deck, but I want to kind of break it down for you. So let's just kind of start off here. So, you know, playing with this Carmen Curie deck, you know, I was able to pilot it um, myself using this particular build using restart. And with this particular deck, you notice a couple of things. Number one, the deck can brick, which is why they use restart. But number two, if it doesn't brick and you get anything close to a hand and you end up drawing um, model number 177, basically, yeah, 177 is broken, poo. Yeah, if you summon 177, 177 is gonna get the whole deck started. Now, as an opponent, if you can stop 177's effect, Typically, you can stop the entire combo. Nine times out of 10, they have to make the search for uh, model 9763. But honestly, sometimes they have it in their hand and most people that play this deck only play two um, 9763s because they can run three 177s and pretty much get to this very easily. Uh, Kamakiri has their own set of cards that allows them to negate and search their deck like Kamakiri Cash Cash and Kamakiri cash in and Kamakiri cash shed. So as you can see, um, you know, this this game, this deck is all about that bread. They're all about that cash, my boy, if you didn't already get the joke. Uh, but what I think is hilarious about this deck is after it does its entire combos and spills out all of its monsters and sets up the back row, it's always going to end on a couple of notes. So the first note is it's going to end with three cards in the back row, three cards on the field, and maybe one card in hand. That's maximum. If they get seven cards on the first turn, they have went full maximum on you, and you're gonna have to pray to the gods that you have an answer for this. Um, and most of the time, you don't really see a lot of guys go maximum. You kind of see guys go with three and two, and they kind of just ended there. So how do you beat the common carry board? Well, there's a few things that I want to point out that this deck kind of struggles with. So number one, any type of monster over 2,800 attack, this deck can struggle with, um, unless they get oil going, which oil can give them 500 additional attack and defense uh, per turn. And you know, that can get pretty dangerous, but if oil isn't going, you know, you can at least hold them off with a monster over 2,800 attack or defense, which is really good. 
Um, the second thing I wanted to point out is that um, most of the cards that people use in the Karma Curie deck does target. So if you are using um, a monster that cannot be targeted, uh, for example, I had a stream yesterday and we were playing with Archfiend's Call. Pretty much, you know, an untargetable card is going to be an easy answer to this deck. And then additionally, in, in on top of all that, you have uh, the additional support that they're running with their back row removal. So if they have three in the back, yeah, baby, three in the back row busted. It busted. Yeah, it busted. <laughs> if you have, um, if you come up against an opponent who has three in the back row, um, it is a coin toss if they're playing Cosmic Cyclone or not. A lot of these Karma Curie decks are not playing Cosmic Cyclone because they are, they kind of like, you know, they feel like they can kind of clear the board with whatever back row they're running. Oh, I see. Oh, baby also said, don't forget about the best card in the game for the common carry deck that they're running right now. Belista squad. Belista squad is another card that, that a lot of these guys are playing and they're playing Belista squad pretty much because with Belista squad, they do not need to play cosmic cyclone. Um, if they're running a uh, Belista squad, that just pretty much means that they're going to be able to, uh, that's right, baby. If they're playing Belisa Squad, that means they're gonna be able to have spot removal for not only monsters, but back row as well. So a lot of these Karma Curie decks are running Belisa Squad in lieu of um, a Cosmic Cyclone, which, you know, for them is a good move, but for you, it's kind of disgusting, it's devastating. So how are you gonna get around this? You know, like I mentioned before, outside of an untargetable monster, how can you beat the Karma Curie deck? Well, the number one thing is hope that they don't go maximum. Hope that they don't set three cards in the back row and have one in the hand or activate the one card that's in their hand, which is Necro Valley and put that on the field. If they go maximum, it's gonna be really hard to crack that board because you're gonna have to get through three back row. Um, so the only cards that you can really use against that is cards like, hey, True Nade, Monster Effects to destroy the back row, or, you know, get lucky with your Cosmic Cyclones and tag the right cards. But outside of luck, you know, what kind of archetype stand up against this deck? Well, Invoked. Invoked works really well against this deck. You know, in terms of meta decks, you know, Invoked is one of the most disgusting uh, time-tested decks. However, you know, with that being said, Invoke is one of the most effective decks against strategies like Karma Curie because they can punish uh, the Karma Curie board really hard with Purgatorio. So this deck can, can am amass a ton of resources all in one turn, but after it builds up all these resources, basically it's gonna cost you um, pretty much nothing to wipe the board with the invocation uh, combination using Purgatorio and Alistair. So as you already know, Purgatorio can attack Baby said that Purgatorio can attack all your opponent's monsters at least one time, and he can get a boost from Alistair, and the boost from Alistair is gonna make him strong enough to run over the entire Karma Curie board. And typically, that would be enough to beat them. But if you can't use your Purgatorio to defeat this deck outright, what's another good card that Invoke uses? They're using Cockadus. So in my personal opinion, I'm thinking, if you're gonna be looking at this deck competitively, Going into the KC Cup tournament, you can expect to see Purgatorio. You can expect to see Cockatus. You can expect to see multiple forms of Invoke. But there's also going to be this Karma Curious deck running around too. And I know what you're thinking. Also, you know, how does Shir Shiranui stand up to this Karma Curious deck? Well, honestly, Shiranui, I would say it's, it's kind of a coin toss. It might really depend on the duelist. So you have Shiranui, which, you know, can build really big boards you can summon sun saga to the field and pretty much be able to nuke a bunch of monsters but in order for him to get sun saga on the field or even successfully use Sun saga's effect they're gonna have to clear the back row and honestly that's a task left up to hate true nade so honestly against shira nui you know if you can get hate true nade off amazing you can defeat this deck 
against um, pretty much any deck. If you can hate true Nate, wipe out all the monsters and then negate this when it comes back on the board, um, then you can definitely beat this deck. But honestly, the hardest thing about this deck is that this deck goes turn one and it has a amazing setup on the first turn, which is pretty much able to lock out any type of plays. So, so my boys, that's going to be it for this. <laughs> so my boys, that's going to be it for this video. Baby said, <laughs> baby said, catch her later. And as always. Keep it dank.